When you decide to enter the farming sector, and the CSA model more specifically, you are choosing a particular kind of life. You are committed to a certain set of trade-offs. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but essentially the things you gain and the things you give up when you decide to be a CSA farmer are pretty common across the board. In this video, we're going to explore all of that. We're going to talk a little bit about the sacrifices inherent in any business, and then share some of the more common ones we've witnessed in organic farming and CSA production. We'll also share how a willingness to sacrifice for the greater CSA model is a part of the contract you take when you decide to call yourself a CSA farmer. Then we'll talk about balance. We'll help you understand the difference between healthy and unhealthy sacrifice, and talk with someone who can help teach you the tools you need to effectively navigate the difference. At the end of the video, we'll ask you to reflect on everything you heard and determine what you are and aren't willing to sacrifice for your business. A lot of us know the good side of starting a business. We know that it can be exciting and fun. We know that we get to choose the work that fulfills us and shapes our own realities. As entrepreneurs, we have total control to build whatever we want. We can build wealth and a legacy for ourselves instead of for someone else. We can literally watch our dreams come true. In so many ways, it's amazing. The merits and joys of entrepreneurship are many. But of course, there is always another side to the coin. On a quest to fulfill your biggest and best ideas and your most fulfilling dreams, there are sacrifices that will need to be made. There will be things you have to give up to keep the business moving forward. Watching your dreams come to life requires sacrifice. Building a business requires sacrifice. Money, time, stability, and a regular schedule are some of the most common things entrepreneurs give up in the beginning. Personally, I have found the life of a farmer to be incredibly rewarding. Not only do I get to build a business for myself and my family, I have also been able to build a business for my local community. That in itself is a tremendous gift. And then there are countless other benefits to being a CSA farmer. Access to abundant fresh food, a deep connection to our customers, and the ability to work outdoors and improve our local food system. However, all the sacrifices have certainly also been a part of my journey. I particularly struggle with having to work at inopportune moments. Many entrepreneurs have to give up control of a regular schedule in the early years. But as a farmer, this is compounded due to having to work within the constraints of Mother Nature. The weather always seems to determine my hours, and that can be frustrating. I'm a social person and have a few important relationships. Canceling plans with people I love at the last minute because of the weather is something that never gets easier for me. The margins of vegetable farming are also particularly slim. I know of many successful CSA farmers who have made a great career in living for themselves, but the financials of farming can still be tight and difficult to handle at times. Another common sacrifice most CSA farmers make is giving up at least some degree of freedom and flexibility when it comes to travel. Many CSA farms operate in a place where the growing season is not year-round. That means you'll be earning the majority of your income during what is often the most beautiful and celebrated months of the year. If operating with slim margins, having the weather dictate your schedule, and missing out on a little bit of summer fun sounds like the worst possible existence for you, then owning your own CSA farm might not be the best choice. Try not to get discouraged by the sacrifices we mentioned. Instead, take some time to really think about how this part of the video made you feel. I think it's especially important to think these things through before you get started, because being a CSA farmer isn't like every other career. When you decide to call yourself a CSA farmer, things look a little different. For one, you're making a season-long commitment, and for two, you're opting into a larger movement. So if you suddenly decide mid-season that the sacrifices of farming aren't worth it, and you need to let things go before the season is over, you could be letting your CSA membership down in a big way, and that could have huge consequences for the CSA community at large. Now, all that being said, we aren't interested in glorifying the sacrifices of farming. We've all witnessed far too many farmers taking the idea of sacrificing for their business to an unhealthy extreme. Glorifying sacrifice and taking things too far can be damaging in the long term. So how do you know the difference? How can you tell what's a healthy and normal sacrifice versus what is damaging? That's a hard question to answer and truly it varies dramatically from individual to individual. Understanding the difference between what's healthy and unhealthy for you requires a lot of introspection and deep thought work about your values, priorities, and goals for a happy life. My name is Ellen Polishuk. I spent the majority of my adult life uh, farming vegetables. And 
uh, three years ago, I retired from field work and from farming and have a full-time job now as a farm coach. And my company that I made up is called Plant to Profit. And I like to bring in that word profit because I want us all to make more money. Today, I've been invited to speak about the idea of balance and balance in one's life. So when does something become out of balance? When your, your choice to pursue your farm dream is causing you to malfunction or dysfunction in other parts of your life. Your, your other relationships in your life are suffering due to the choice to become a farmer, whether that's your relationships with the people you work with inside your business, the, your family, whether it's relationships with your community, your greater social network. When all of those things start to be pain points, and instead of being a source of joy and support, then maybe something's gone out of whack. How to uh, manage this balance. And here's a few tips and tricks that I've found incredibly useful for myself. Tool number one is to have a coach or a therapist. Somebody whose whole job is to listen to you and offer you some perspective. Basically, perspective is the answer to hardship. And also, it can come from a cohort of other growers, other people who are in your same business. And that that's, there's a lot to be gained from listening to somebody else's hardships and having somebody else listen to yours. Someone who can really um, understand the intimate details of the particularities of market farming and give each other perspective and say, yep, you say that every year about this time. This is the time when you're really having a hard time. Remember, and we always get through it. And then the last tip would be to do some reading. And there's a really great book out there called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F Word. And this is bringing the idea to really finding out what matters to you, what is really truly important and worth giving your Fs to, which things in your life are really the most important. Hi, my name is Ray Tyler, and I am the owner of Rose Creek Farms, and I'm here today to talk to you about our journey and struggle to finding the balance in our work and home life. I grow on one acre here in West Tennessee, and we grow lots of salad greens, baby root crops, tomatoes, and peppers seasonally. We grow and deliver 52 weeks a year to those in West and Middle Tennessee. Around 12 years ago, my wife and I decided to start a farm. We had $150 in savings, zero experience, no land, but we really had this passion and vision for feeding our local communities. Fast forward five years, we found ourselves really overwhelmed with the amount of land we were trying to farm, and we just found ourselves way too strung out. All the chaos of trying to learn how to farm, supply a good income, we found ourselves almost hating our life. Our quality of life was worse than when I was working an eight to five job. And part of the vision for farming was I wanted to have more time with our family. Around that time is when our daughter was diagnosed with stage four cancer. We were, she was given weeks to live. We spent that year really dialing it down, taking care of our daughter, which is completely free of cancer now. We really scaled down our work life to an eight hour day. And we were really scared at first because as every farmer knows, there's never enough time to get these lists done. But what we found is limiting ourselves to how much time and energy and resources we have, we made a lot more wise decisions on what crops and how much we were gonna plan to grow. And that really led us to farming a lot more smarter, effectively, and ultimately growing and raising the things that our clients really, really wanted to eat. And we literally tripled our net income the following year by simply refocusing, prioritizing family over finances, 
and making sure that we were home at a decent time. We limited our working hours. We tried to farm smarter and not harder. We even found enough time to take a two week vacation in the middle of summer, which is the first time we've ever done that. Before you move forward, think both of the kind of farmer you want to be and the kind of life you want to live. Think about some of the tools Ellen mentioned and how you will evaluate whether or not you're giving up too much for your business. It's amazing how much value can come from pausing for a moment before you get started building the business of your dreams. If you take the time to write down some of the things you aren't willing to sacrifice in the long term, it will really help you make sure you are in alignment as your business scales and grows.